that you're getting good audio from me. You know, we got to make sure it's quality. But this is, a, this is just my opportunity to sit down with you, my comic peeps, for us to have this little conversation. I like to try to keep these a little short. We're going to be doing this for maybe an hour, maybe a little bit less. We'll see how it goes. But I posted a question to my comic fam over on the Instagram page at Comic Tom 101, my IG comic family, and they brought some questions to be answered. And please, it would be awesome if you guys have any questions for me. I can dive into them after I hit some of these by posting them into the comment section right now. Thank you to everyone who's currently joining me. I hope you're having a fantastic Sunday, a good weekend. We already have a whopping 40 people joining us. It's a great day. I'm feeling good. Let's get into it with the first question for the Q and A. All right, so this next question right here is a really good one, one that I get asked a good amount. So we're going to dive right into it with this Hellboy question. First question is coming from my homie over on Instagram. What is your favorite Mignola item you own? Ooh, what a question. This is coming from uh, KR Cronian 23034. Cronian 23034, thank you so much for the great question. So we're going to start this podcast off, this, this live feed day, talking about one of my favorite Hellboy items that I own currently. My Mignola collection, it has its ebbs and flows. It changes, all right? My, my taste changes. I'm a man of change. But this is one that I've owned only twice. I've had, um, excuse me, this particular item I have owned at least five or six times. But this is the only one of its kind that I have found that I have purchased, and one of the very few that exist. This may actually be the cheapest. Excuse the cheapest. This may be, this is the cheapest comic. No, this actually may be the, the rarest, the scarcest Hellboy item, and let me tell you about this, okay? Oh my gosh, I'm like just fumbling it. Let's do it. It's okay, it's triple bagged and boarded. I'm never selling it, it's gorgeous. Okay, so here we go. This right here is a supplement to the Comic Books Buyer's Guide in 1993. Okay, this right here is an insert. It was a centerfold of the buyer's guide. It's a two page spread, one of the earliest appearance of Hellboy. We're talking under six appearance, appearances at this point. And it's a uh, you know, two page story, um, technically four, but you know, it has one. You open it up and it's just two pages. It was the center of the comic book's buyer's guide back in 1993. Now, what makes this particular issue special? Um, this, I'm going to pull it out so you actually can see it, so you believe me, because I get a lot of people who don't believe me about this book, about this, this two-page spread, and it's, it's worth a look. So this may be the first time it's been shown on camera, and the first time on a YouTube video, because I don't think anyone knows about this. So I'm going I'm to break this to you guys. This is really cool. So this buyer's guide was in the centerfold. You can find these buyer's guides, um, rather the insert. The insert was pulled out a lot of them, and... What you'll find is that this two-page spread, I'm gonna show it to you very carefully here. It's near mint, let's keep it near mint. Boom, this two-page spread is gorgeous. Um, I don't wanna, you can find pictures of this online. I would love to be able to show you I and mean, further live videos will be able to do those kind of things. But it's a four-page Mignola spread goodness of him um, just really going at it, going at it with, uh, you know, just some classic, classic characters, Herman von Kemp, boom. Looking good. Now, this would have been in the centerfold, and you can find these for between $150 to $250, depending on grade. I'm gonna put this back because you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna throw, like I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna hurt it, I'm gonna feel really bad about myself, and we're not gonna let that happen today. So bear with me, guys. All right, um, this insert, you can find for $150 to 250 bucks depending on grade. Very cool, right? The part that I was gonna show you, I haven't showed you yet, so I have to open it back up. <laughs> All right. Now, what you'll find with this is what you will find with this is that these were removed from the centerfold. Okay. Ooh, is this blurry or grainy? It looks pretty good to me on my end. Um, this centerfold right here would have been torn out. And if you look for these, you're gonna find on nearly all of them, you know, because it was tear torn out. Oh, it's blurry. Oh. I'm sorry, guys. I have no idea why it's blurry and grainy. You know, we're going to have to just bear, but go go through this in this way. And I promise that with people like Closet Geek coming in with the $10 super chat, we do appreciate you. Um, I'm going to be getting a new camera 
for this particular moment. We're going to fix this. I do appreciate you guys. Um, it typically gets a little bit better as we go, though. So let's just bear with me here. Um, hopefully the connection gets better. So. All right, so here we go. Um, this particular insert would have been torn out. So what you're gonna find with this copy is that it has holes in the centerfold, right? Because it was torn out. And that torn out centerfold is gonna bring that 150 to 250 marker. Now, what's cool about this is that these were actually printed in abundance. There was an additional, what's said to be 20 to 50 extra prints that were made. These prints would have gone to Mignola, to other people who purchased the, the, the buyer's guide, or rather who were part of the buyer's guide. From my conversations with Mignola, it sounds like a lot of these times when these are printed, the artists and writers, they get parts of it um, as a thank you. Um, and there are times that there is an overprinting of it, that they make more than what they use. Now, this is one of those copies. This is one of those few 30 to 50 copies that they made in abundance. How do we know that this is one of those that were made in abundance? Well, it wasn't used in the buyer's guide. And the way that you would know that it's not used in the buyer's guide is that there are no holes on the centerfold. And if you look, there is no light going through that center. This is a holeless print, a holeless two page spread of Hellboy. This is one of the extras that were used, one of the very, very few printed um, and very, very cool piece of Hellboy history. Be, let's just be careful. Let's just be so careful. But anyways, this is one of my favorite Mignola pieces. And I'll tell you why it's one of my all-time favorite Mignola pieces. Because aside from it just being a really cool Hellboy story, a very unique uh, piece that a lot of people don't know about, and you know I'm all about finding those rare gems, this was uh, posted on eBay. This was posted on eBay. And I found it. I had been looking for it for years. I knew that these existed. I found one without the holes. And I was so stoked to find someone on eBay that had it. And the reason why I found it on eBay is because the buyer actually messaged me. He saw that I had a copy with holes in it that I had listed. And he said, hey, I see that you have one of the supplements listed. I have a no hole copy that I think you may be interested in. And I'll sell it to you at a deal because... It's a very scarce book and not a lot of people know about it. And this is, you know, this is got to be four to five years ago, maybe six years ago that this, this whole thing happened. So I told him, absolutely. I've been looking for this. Thank you for letting me know. I would have missed the listing had you not reached out to me. Turns out, for those of you who don't know, I live about 45 minutes north of Seattle. And let me see here. Um, north of Seattle. And I live in a town called Lake Stevens. I uh, look at this person. He legit lives three blocks from me. Like I could walk to his house. It was that random. Like there's no, this is before YouTube. This is before I even had an Instagram page. This is when I was just collecting, living here in Lake Stevens, looking for this book. This eBay buyer happened to be three blocks away, two blocks away, like really close. I was able to go to his house that day and buy this from him. It's crazy. So if that person watches our show, thank you so much for the find. Um, it's one of my prized possessions, one of the most rare Hellboy appearances that I own. I own a few of them. I will show more of them on the mic in the future. But yeah, wanted to share that with you guys. Something fun from the vault. All right, so I'm going to be going through. If you guys have any questions in the, in the feed, please do so. I also have a mystery mail call question that came through. And I just want to let you know the vibe. Um, I will be sure to um, be responding to your email. We did get it. Um, I will be following up with you by the end of the day today. No worries there. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions they want to bring up in the comment feed, this is the time to do it. And we will keep it going because I do have another question here from Instagram. Here we go. Um, this is a really good question. We have from comic G man 2164. His comment is Tom, what are your thoughts about all the different uh, variants like for ASM, um, et cetera. We have X-Men that just pumped out a ton of variants. What do I think about them? Because the, the, concern is that the variant market is starting to potentially look like a market that we had in the 90s, which we all know what happened with that. It ended up harming the comic book market. Post books like this that came out and that were sold to the, you know, misinformed to the, you know, to the, to the market of people who didn't actually care about the comics and were sold that this would be a, a way to make money. 
you know, purchase Turok by the hundred so that you can have your kids go to college. Like that's kind of how the market was treated back then. The concern is, is when we're seeing these variant comics come out now, are we going to start to go down that rabbit hole again? Now we mentioned this from time to time, like from, from time to time on the podcast that, and this is unanimous. This is every member of the podcast, specifically Russ, um, Jeff as well, who have not just um, know quite a bit about the nineties and what happened, but they lived through it. They have friends that currently have shops that lived through it, that still have boxes of these comic books hiding in the corners of the back rooms that no one goes into, you know, it's like the, you know, the part that we don't talk about, you know, don't go under that table because that's where all the die cut, all the die cut supermans are, you know, are we headed down that path again? And I think not. I think that everybody here thinks not. And what I think about this variant market, I love it. And I know that may not be something that people like to hear, but I absolutely love it because the reason why there are variant comics coming out is because we have such a new and growing comic book market that we actually have people that want to purchase these comics, not just for speculation, not just to collect them all. They're purchasing a cover of an X-Men number one because it's their favorite character. And J. Scott Campbell did a beast cover that's awesome and there are beast fans who want it so it's not just a hey there's 20 comics 30 covers that are all variants and we're trying to make the the most we can no like these are variants that are coming out to uh please the most viewership as they can garner so that we can bring as many people into not just the reading aspect of it but the collecting aspect of it and the difference between that and what was happening in the 90s is People are not being sold specifically from the publisher either that these books are going to spike. And that's a very, very different market. So my opinion, I like it. If there's a ton of variants that come out, put them out. I'm excited about that. As soon as we start seeing a market of people being sold the way that Turok was sold back in the day, the way that Youngblood was sold back in the day, Spidey number one, was sold. X-Men number one was sold. Those types of books when it's like, hey, oh my gosh, we have something new that's going to be worth money. Ah, You're going to need to get the playing card. You need all the playing cards because the playing cards are worth money. That kind of conversation is absent. People don't buy into that. If I went on the mic and said, oh my gosh, X-Men number one has five different playing cards and each one is going to have their own playing card. We need to buy, 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 buy. Comic fam, what are you doing? This has a, a playing card in it and it's sealed. We should be buying these by the 500s. Can you ever see me doing that? No, like that would be such a unique and rare occasion that I don't even think that would sell that type of narrative to you. You're smarter than that. We're smarter than that. That kind of stuff isn't gonna fly. We're not gonna see an X-Force number one trading card that ends up pushing a book to past a million print count ever again. I really don't think that's gonna happen. And you know what? If it does, I don't see it something that could be even marketed to, to make that happen, to incent that happening. I don't see it happening. I don't see the mainstream media getting involved, which is absolutely what would need to happen to have our market shift from the 90s to what it is now and to have it go into a second black hole. I don't see that happening. Um, these print counts are too low. The comic book buyers that are collecting and purchasing these and reading them are smarter. They have the internet and they're more knowledgeable. Being more knowledgeable is the difference between what we have now and what we have then. And as a market, if we are smarter, we're not going to let this happen again with collectible comics. And the things that are going to spike, they're going to have a reason to spike because the cover is freaking awesome and everyone wanted it and no one purchased it at the beginning. And you know what? If that irritates you, that there are comics that are going for way more money because they're one in 15, one in 50, one in a hundred. Well, like, guess what? That's how this has always been. This is like how comic books get made. You have to have those variant comics. You have to have those tiers, not just for the collectors. Like these tiers aren't made just for you and me. These tiers are largely made for the comic book store owners so that they have an incentive to place orders for comic books that may not sell off their shelf. Let that sink in a little bit. If you're a comic book store owner like Russ or like your local comic shop and they have to buy 50 copies to get the 150 variant, that's an incentive for them if they only have 30 people who want to buy the comic. 
Yes, it's a risk if they pay 20 more comics, pay for 20 more comics at the price that they get comics for because if they don't sell they're putting those 20 comics into their back issue bin where they're going to sell for half of what they actually purchased them at wholesale so they will lose money what's the incentive the incentive variant that's where the incentive variant comes out if they can breach that 20 comic gap that 50 comic gap depending on their size and what they can sell that variant may make it worth it to that store to recoup enough of what is the risk that could put them out of business and get more comics to be sold to the public and to have the stock to help move comics that may not be selling as well. Um, and Because comic books generally don't always go from shelf to home. There's a lot of titles that end up sitting on those walls and every comic shop has them and every comic shop has a growing lawn box by the day that is getting stacked with books that just are not going to sell, that are going down in value that are decreasing in value as soon as they come in the store, just like a car off the lot. All right. So anyways, that's what I have to say about that. Um, it's not the most popular opinion. There's a lot of doom and gloom people who are like, this is exactly where it's headed. We're going to see variants take over the market. Marvel pumps out 30 variants. Everyone thinks they're worth money. They buy them out. And then people are going to just drop all their comic books and then People are not going to buy new comics and then the market's going to go to hell and writers and artists are going to start getting fired. Like local comic shops are going to close. Like you can see how that narrative could be told. I just think that the market, like that's just, it's a different market. We lived through that. We're not going to let it happen again. Um, and I really think it's because the buyer and really the internet overall is informing people and making them have a little bit better buying decisions. You're buying Donny Kate's run, not because he may have a new character show up that's awesome that may happen some of his books spike but you're buying donny kate's run because it's awesome you're buying donny kate's run because you got to read it you want to know you want to be in the know and then by reading it you not just want to be in the know you want to own it and you want to own more than one copy hellboy filter if you want to own if i have a hellboy book that is so damn good i want to own more than one copy i'm going to want one slab i want one i can open up maybe i want one on my wall and it's that type of collecting that is being met now that kind of stuff is 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 open to happening the publishers are encouraging it happening because yet yeah, sells more books but it makes the collectors happy and this isn't the type of collecting that drove us down a market path that ended up ruining the medium and yeah that's what i have to say about that so anyways let's move it on here we go Ooh, soda pop putting out here to the ether half price books has a 50 percent off any one item today these are a really good day if you are buy half half price books to go and pick up that key that you've been eyeing that they have priced at full price because half price books does this thing where they don't sell comic books for half price anymore. But you know what? If you go to half price books on the right days, I got to move this because I'm going to map it over. Boom. You can get a good deal. And I've done that multiple times. I got a new Mutants 98 for half off. I ended up paying like a hundred bucks for what was a $200 book at the time. Um, and there are a lot of examples I have of that. Half price books, if you go to their website, you can sign up for their email list. I recommend everybody do that if you are buy a half price books because they will email you this discount coupon. And they regularly do discounts all throughout the week where they start on Monday or rather Sunday and they go through Saturday and the discounts get bigger as you get towards the end of the week. So. Sometimes you may have to just take the 20 or 30% discount earlier in the week to get that good book. It happens. I've done it. Other times you can get lucky. And on that Friday or today, Sunday, when they're doing this 50% off coupon, you can go in and get half off of a book that's full price and you get a steal because you get this awesome book at a really good deal. So thank you so much for Soda Pop for mentioning that. I really do appreciate that. Uh, and letting the comic fam know about these discounts. I like seeing that in the feed. If there are discounts or anything happening, um, I, I try to mention it in, about, you know, because eBay does discounts too, where they'll just do any item 20% off. Those are really good days to buy on eBay. I suggest people actually wait for things like that. And yeah, let's, uh, let's keep that going. If anyone has any tips or tricks, they can put that in the description. I will always appreciate it. I'll try to mention it as much as possible because we want to spread that comic book karma. We want everyone to be able to get good deals on comic books. All right, let's see here. We have another uh, good question here from The Coyote. Guys, is it better to get a modern CGC key for 9.6 or a Silver Age low-grade CGC? It's entirely dependent on how you're collecting, and that's going to be a very 
a generic response to specific collecting tips like that. Are you looking to buy and flip and grow your collection? I have no problems with that. I do that myself. There's no way that back when I started buying comics that I would fork out what I value this book to be probably five to $700. That's a paycheck. I'm not going to do that. But if you grow your collection and you're trading, you can make costs like that minimal. And now you're spending $100 because you traded other books that went up in value. You made other people happy because you gave them a deal and you grow your collection. That's kind of my, been my, you know, that's how I grew my personal collection. But if you're looking, it all depends on what you're doing. So the Coyote, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. What are you trying to do? Because if you're trying to collect and you want some opinions on whether you should be collecting silver versus modern, you know, we need a little bit more info there. Because personally, I think a really cool 9.6 Hellboy may be cooler than their standard Silver Age comic. But Fantastic Four 20, the first appearance Mole Man, has a letter section from George R. R. Martin, which happens to be his very first published work that he ever got produced. That is an amazing Silver Age key that no one really cares about that would look great in a slab, even if it is low grade. So again, it's, all, it's really all dependent on what you're looking for. If you're looking for collector's value to like add some really cool pieces of art to your collection, I would say, yeah, go with some cool Silver Age if you like Silver Age characters or storylines. Otherwise, there are some really good modern books that are affordable. You can get in high grade. And if you're looking for investment stuff, you know, modern stuff is the most risky. It really is. So I would stick with older. Um, there's a reason why we call it gold, silver, and bronze, right? If you're going to invest... What do people tell you to invest in? That's all I have to say about that. All right, let's move on. Um, ooh, Tom, did you hear about, this is from Adam Murray, and I, I haven't, I have not heard about this. Tom, did you hear about the curse of brimstone foil cover? First print was an error. DC released it, re reissued a free reprint. Have you talked about it yet? I have not talked about that yet. That's a really cool thing to know. I really like finding out about stuff that's getting reprinted versus recalled, error prints. Um, first, I've heard about that. Thank you for letting us know. If you do have this foil print, you guys are going to want to pull those out. Make sure that, you know, if you have them listed without that on eBay, that you're, you know, you're revising. Take a look at where these prices are going. I don't know what they're going for, but we do know Wolverine, that variant that the, the second print that came out that had the error the star wars pages that wasn't recalled so shops got new copies of it the stuff went out and that book is still holding strong above 15 bucks so even if it doesn't look like it may be a big deal that book may be hot right now and you could put that towards another book so if you're not attached to that first uh first print of that what is it brimstone uh, curse of brimstone you may want to move it John Comics with Kids. This is a homie here. Thank you so much for joining the feed. I appreciate you, man. And shout out to uh, to the little ones. Um, we have and Kate and Charlie. Boom. Oh, we have Tom. Do you ever imagine more products for Geek Street 101 aside from the clothes and the MMC? John Comics with Kids, my man. I do. I do. We have a merch line that is being developed. Uh, a couple more shirts that I'm, I'm making. I look at the merch line as kind of a, this is a personal thing. These are my clothes, right? Like if I'm going to put out shirts, I don't want them to be just generic hair, you know, help support the podcast shirt. That's kind of what the Geek Responsibly one is. Like, I know those who rep the Geek Responsibly logo, that is like, you're just, you're helping support the podcast. You're going to, you know, you're wearing the logo. The shirt's decent, you know, like it's, it's a good, it's a good fit for the sizes that they're, that they have. Like it's a really quality shirt. That logo can withstand multiple, multiple washes without getting messed up like that my my goal with it was to put out something you can help support the podcast and if anyone wants to get a black or white geek responsibly shirt um geekstreet101.com you hit that merch button but the focus was a good quality shirt so that you could you know wash it multiple times and if you want to help support the podcast and get in a video you can do that but all the other shirts that i have that I'm about to release here as we get closer to the new year. The focus isn't just putting out a shirt that you just want to like get once, maybe wear it once, and then you'll help support the podcast. Here's 20 bucks. No, I want to put out a shirt that I would be really proud of. So I'm looking at this as like my own apparel line, which is kind of weird to think about, but ultimately I have some shirt ideas. So if you like our content, I think you're gonna like my shirt ideas because I want to do some very very unique comic book oriented apparel that you're not going to get anywhere else unless you are a uh, making them yourself. So that's coming. I appreciate the, the question, John. 
Um, other than that, the big thing is as far as selling things on the Geek Street website, I don't really see much more happening than the merch store and the mystery mail call because as the mystery mail call grows as a product, the product changes as well. So what do I mean by that? Well, as the pro as the box grows, we're gonna our goal is to add more comics, better comics, and more value. Because as the community grows, we're able to do more. And if we're doing more, we're able to serve our audience more. So I don't necessarily see there being more products, but maybe more add-ons to the mystery mail call, um, or just an overall better product itself because we're pumping out better comics and trades and prints and what have you. So thank you so much for the for the question. You're motivating me to get right back on the merch site so we can put up, pump out some cool shirts for the comic book community. All right, let's see here. Um, ooh, and someone's saying it sounds like the mic isn't turned on. How interesting would that be if the mic wasn't turned on and this whole time I'm talking into the damn laptop? That would be a bummer. I'm hoping that's not the case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, we're going through. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. We're about 25 minutes in. We have 156 people joining us. Shout out to Carlito Classico who's joining me. Um, Heron Evans is saying it's grainy. Thank you for joining me, Heron Evans, um, who is a member of the podcast. Do appreciate that. I'm excited to see how we can fix these type of things in future videos. Kills me, guys. There's so much that goes into making this happen, and it's clear on my end. But you know what? We're going to keep rolling with it because we just got to make the content, guys. We just got to do it. All right. Let's see here. Boom. Moving forward. Um, ooh, here's a question. Taylor Alexander Cassidy says there are over – oh, and I just, I just refreshed my page and I lost the comments. All right. Well, she said that there was only 130 people at the time that she posted it. Now we're pushing 155, but we have 47 likes, which means – hey, guys, you should like the video. Should help out by liking the video because it actually gets it viewed in the ether. So do your home, do your boy a favor. Hit that like button. Let's get that above 100. There's 150 of you guys on here. And that way the video gets pumped out there. People can see it and we'll keep it going. All right. But hey, thank you so much for, for mentioning that. I always forget. You got to remind. You know, if you don't remind, people forget. It's, it's no big thing, but it helps. The, it really goes a long way. It helps the video get viewed. Um, uh, Taylor Alexander Cassidy says, Donny Cates is absolutely killing it. This Venom run is phenomenal. I agree. The Venom run is killer. Um, I have not been reading any of the Donny Cates run in its entirety. What I've done is I've watched a ton of reviews from members of the comic fam as they review these issues here and there. And I'm getting like little blips of the story because I don't really want to read it yet. I want to read it all together. And I feel like there's got to be a breakdown series. It's so good. Like the stuff that I have seen, the, the pages that I have read, I'm so excited to go through this and to just freak out on the mic about it because everyone's freaking out about it. I want to wait. I want to wait a little bit. Give me a little bit of time. I'm going to go through it with you guys. We're going to do it on the mic. We're going to get really fun. Maybe we'll get Donnie Cates to be part of it. <laughs> um, let's see here. How do you go grade wise with Silver Age, John? Um, I'm not sure what that question was. We're going to just keep going. Um, let's see here. Love your content. Comic Tom says, Andrea Jump. Hey, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, let's see here. Oh, Carlito Classico said, I just found, bought my first Silver Age romance yesterday, half price books. Oh, you know that's going to make Jeff happy. That's awesome. Um, ro the romance section of the Silver Age and into the Golden Age is just some of the most gorgeous art. I'm growing to really appreciate it now that I have the uh, photo journal guide to the Golden Age comics. I can see all the covers, all everything with like, the artists who were involved, like the bigger name, the ones that are credited in the books. I'm going through, I'm learning so much. I'm excited. We have a golden age show that's in development right now. And the goal is to do it bi-weekly, but you know how that goes. If it's, if it ends up being successful, we're going to push it to a weekly thing with Jeff, but um, at least bi-weekly, because it's going to be a bit more of a historical show. I want to dive deep into not just the pages, not just the panels, but the writers, the authors, and give these Golden Age classics the time they deserve on the mic with visuals, with a bit of a story that brings us back to the 1930s, to the 1940s, to the 1950s, and like just give some life to these golden age classics i'm stoked i'm excited i hope you're with me and well done carlito classico i like seeing that you're finding some new stuff to collect to add to your pull list especially stuff that we're talking about that isn't getting a whole lot of love in the community because we need more people 
giving it love. Like it can't just be me. We need people like you, Car um, um, Classico, um, Carlito Classico. We need people like you to post on Instagram. You're fine. So they, they can, you can show off this, the gorgeous gold and silver that you're finding and then other people can see it, appreciate it. And then I don't know, maybe turn them on to some silver as well. All right. We also have another code here from Taylor Alexander Cassidy. Thank you for looking out for your comic book fam. Use the code we can sell to at in stock trades at the checkout. You get 3% off your order. It ends tomorrow. Very cool. Oh, and I happen to know on Comixology right now, it ends tomorrow. There is a sale on Grant Morrison goodness. Like Grant Morrison made the top 10 list last week with Invisibles number one. And you can go on and on to Comixology and get not just Invisibles, you can get um doom patrol you can get all-star superman you also can get animal man all of these runs that like really incorporated um what's the word i'm looking for here surrealism into writing into the comic into like the modern comic book age when alan moore and grant morrison came on the scene and just caused a ruckus at dc changing the modern market all of that is on sale on comiXology right now thank you so much for mentioning that this is happening, um, uh, Taylor, and we're going to keep that going. I like seeing this. See, now I have some stuff I have to do. I have to go and buy some comics after the show. Oh, it's awesome. All right. And then let's see here. We do have, um, let's see here. This is a good question. Hello, Tom. Would you talk about how you press books, for example, with best practices? Okay, I can do that. Let's do that right now. Ooh. I said I wouldn't do stuff like that, but we're going to do it because there was someone here that also asked a really good question about pressing. They said, um, this is uh, par my man one. Do you use steam before you press your book? So I kind of came a little prepared. I don't like talking about pressing comics. There's a reason because, okay, this is the best analogy I can put it. This is the best way to put it because I get asked to do two things the most. For one, more talk about modern comics, which it's coming. We're going to figure something out. I have some show ideas in the works. We have some guests that are wanting to be part of the podcast. Modern comic book talk is going to come at some point. But the second question that I get asked the most is about pressing comic books. Over on Instagram, um, I do a lot of before and after pictures of pressing and cleaning books. Haven't done it in a couple of weeks, but I've been busy making content for you guys. I'm going to be back on that pretty soon. But pressing comic books. The reason why I don't make videos on pressing comic books, for one, I can draw. Like, I'm terrible at it. I don't draw very well. Um, I have no business teaching anybody to draw. But if I were to put this Turok on the table with a camera, I could figure out how to do that and make it look pretty decent. And I'm sure people would watch it. But you know what? I'm not an artist. Like, I'm not. There are so many better people to learn from. I feel the same about pressing. I've been pressing comic books for about four years now. I have pressed hundreds and hundreds of comic books. I have ruined comic books. I have fixed comic books. I have pressed Golden Age comics. I have pressed comic books that are worth thousands of dollars. I've gone the gamut of my pressing examples of, that I can provide on the mic here. I've, I've, I've taught myself the best I can, and I'm, it's a process that I'm always learning. Um, I learn new tricks. I meet people all the time in the community who have tricks. Shout out to Just Pele, my homie, who um, regularly gives me some just awesome knowledge and tips and tricks when I'm when I'm, you know, finding myself dealing with something I've never seen before. Pressing is an art, and you're going to hear that from the most professional pressers. When it really comes down to it, they'll say, "Oh no, pressing comic books, repairing them um, in a way that doesn't cause them to be like fully refurbished and like altered." you know, restored. We're not going to use the restored name. We're talking about repairing them in a way that doesn't add to them, that doesn't decrease their value if it gets that purple label, because it's not going to if you do it right. That is an art form and your best pressers in the game. And I've met, I've met people who legit, it's like they're, they got to be doing some type of black magic. Like legit, how do you fix that paper? It's impossible. How did you remove that stain? How did you decrease that Sharpie from 50% to like 20%? Like what alchemy are you doing? Alphonse, what is happening? Like that's the kind of stuff that I've seen in my time working with comics. And it's an art form when it comes down to it. I can draw. I'm not going to teach people how to draw. I can press a book, but I'm not a person to teach people how to press because it takes time. It takes practice. And more importantly, 
there's no one way to do it. There's no one way. I can't just tell you this is what you do. If you go online and you look up um, the standard how to press guide, you're going to see a page that's like, okay, this is how you do it. And we're going to tell you the bare minimum based off of year, paper quality, and like what grade, what you're dealing with. And there's going to be like a hundred things like, but if you can do it like this way, but you do it like this, if it's like this. And then if you do it like this, but, but you go over here. And then if you do, if you run into this problem, but you can do this, 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 and this, that's how it is with pressing books. Cause everything's different. Are you dealing like it? And the steps are different. So it's not a process. I feel comfortable teaching because I legit will be asked questions about books and how to fix them. And I want to give my recommendation, but if I go on the mic and I just like go through an entire process, um, I want to teach people right. I don't want to do anyone wrong. I don't want to help screw up comic books. And the reality of pressing, I would never recommend someone to just have one comic book, five comic books, 20 comic books, and say, yeah, I need to, I need to start pressing. I have 20 key comic books I want to press. I would say, don't do it. I would say, go on to Instagram, find your peeps that can recommend a good presser, pay the $10 a book, and have a professional do it. Because you can't learn to press on those 30 books. You can't. You're going to ruin those books. It's going to happen. Trust me. I have friends who went that route and they screwed up books. I have, I know so many people. I've screwed up books. The way that you become good at pressing is by taking it and treating it like what it is, an art form. You go through the process and you, you if you're going to buy a t-shirt press, and you're going to spend money on bags and boards, that, or rather the boards that you need, and, and what you're going to use to, to get the best press quality as you possibly can. You need to go through this process as if you were learning to draw for the first time. And you need to spend the time day and day and day learning how to press books. And you need to learn how to press different kind of problems. You need to be looking for stuff that's water damage, that has soiling, that has um, um, like just like all of the gamut of issues. It needs to be there and you need to practice on, on book after book, after book, after book. And you're going to mess up on books. You're going to lose money on books. You're going to want to buy comic books specifically for the purpose of pressing them, you know, and then push yourself to test the grade. Are you know, I, I've legit done books where I thought I did a great job, sent it off to get graded. And it came back that the pages were wavy because I just, I didn't keep it in the press five minutes longer than I should have. Like that kind of stuff has happened. I've been through those situations and only until you go through those situations, you'll be comfortable to say, Hey, you have a Avengers number four, give it to me. I'll take care of it. And that's what we're talking about. Like when we're really getting down to it, those who want information on how to press, they want to press their books and fix them. And I'm not about to go on the mic and have people um, see what I do, but then in the moment have the mistakes that are bound to come up happen and then you start ruining your books and that's, that's just not the way to go there are other people that devote their entire channels to how to press their comics and it's way more than just getting a t-shirt press and clamming them down and just frying the comic book till the crease comes out because it's just not what happens some books you can get away with the press 10 15 minutes some books you can really really turn that heat up and let it sit there for a half hour some books you need to be Five minutes, five minutes, take off, cool down, put back on the press, leave it on there for five days. I've done all kinds of stuff to make a book that to the best of its ability to. And really the proper way to learn to press is by going through those situations, going through the errors, going through the mistakes, and just keep on trucking. Keep learning from your mistakes and do better and better. Shout out to Big Will who's donated a ton a ton of comics to the mystery mail call you're awesome my friend i'm excited to send out some of those golden age classics you sent to the mail call some of our first like golden age horror that's going out it's crazy what's the worst collection you've ever bought or seen first super chat big will Ooh, we're gonna move on to that question here in a second because that's, that's a good question coming in with the good questions i i appreciate that i appreciate that okay so first off we're gonna finish up with a pressing tip so Answering the question that I started, um, using Steam. Here's the issue with Steam. Absolutely. You should always be using Steam. What? Tom just said something he wouldn't say. I'm going to tell you something that I can at least definitively say is that almost every time you're going to need to use Steam. 
Because when you're pressing a comic book, what are you doing? You're putting heat. You're applying a lot of heat. You're applying an iron to the front and back, at back of the comic. Now, no matter what, no matter what, there is moisture, whether it be small. There is some moisture. There's moisture in these pages. No matter what, there is some moisture in this when it was made. Now, when you heat up, you can't, this, don't, don't press this book. This is, this is not good. You can't press a, <laughs> this will melt. All right, so don't do that. But if you are pressing a book that can be pressed, not a turtle, there's going to be some type of heat exchange. When there is heat that's being applied, what happens? Well, that moisture is going to dry up. And you see this happen on comic books that don't have enough moisture. You can take a, what otherwise would be a 9.6 to a 9.8 and actually cause problems because you remove too much moisture from the pressing that you did correctly. And it actually adds ripples. It adds stress marks. It actually causes it, the pages to shrink just a little, just enough for you to be able to see problems that you just cause into the comic. So steam, steam is how you avoid that. And the best part is you can actually get away with a good amount of steam on a comic book as long as you're not staining it with the water. Now, steam, how are you applying the steam? That is the question. That is the rule here. Like the one thing, if you're going to use steam, you can't overdo it, but you also don't want to underdo it. The comic can actually withstand a good amount of, of uh, moisture, but if it gets to the point where you're putting water droplets on it, you're screwing it up, okay? Some things can be fixed, but here's my tip. I actually purchased a face steamer. I'm gonna show you this right here. This right here is a face steamer. It's actually a towel steamer. So first off, really good product. It helps clean your face. You put this over your face here and it starts spraying, like it doesn't spray, it starts applying like a humidifier, really warm air on your face. It cleans your pores, it's really great. Now I don't use it for this, but I have, it's a great machine. I have another one that I use up in my bathroom just for that purpose. It's also a towel warmer, which is kind of random. This is all, like has nothing to do with what I'm telling you, but you can put a towel in there and it'll steam the towel up and then, hey, now it's like a spa in your house for really cool. Like, you know, I I'm down. It's a pure daily care. Um, you can get this off Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond kind of thing. But anyways, that's beside the point. Now, why I like this steamer to steam comics. First off, I've used hand steamers, like what you would use on clothes, right? Think of it, you're putting steam on a comic book and it's like, shh, you know, you're getting, you're getting it from a far, kind of far away. You don't want to screw up the comic, but what happens with handheld steamers? This is what happens to me. I have yet found one that doesn't do this. There's always a bit, a bit too much moisture that happens on the handle and you get droplets. You get little, little drops of water. You got to avoid that. You got to be careful. You can steam the comic. And if you're doing it from a distance, sure. And you're getting it good. But keep in mind, you got to do this quick. When you're pressing a book, you can't just steam it, steam it. All right, I'm going to go make some mac and cheese real quick. Cut up some hot dogs, come back. All right, let me get the back of it now. Steam it. No, by the time you do that, that moisture is already in the comic. It's already screwing up the comic because it's probably been sitting too long. It's starting to ripple the pages. Like, you don't want to do that. You got to do this really quick. You got to get right to that steaming Post steam right to the press. Climb it down, make it happen, Captain. So what you want to do is you want to steam it as quickly as possible, and you want to get it on both inside and out, right? You got to keep it even. You got to keep it even. You got to make sure that if you're putting enough moisture here, it's got to be on the back. Otherwise, again, we were talking about that, that moisture level. If there's not enough moisture here, but it's over here, you're going to have a problem. It's got to be similar. Now, how do we use this? I like using this for one because if you're, you know, I have my own way of, like holding the board and being right, you know, basically being able to do this kind of number. And you're really getting the book, book good. You're getting the back of the book really good. All right. Now what's happening is this is steam that's coming up. No droplets of water are going to hit that comic. I've never had an issue getting a comic book dripped on from the steamer. Now you got to be careful. Like there's always error that can happen. You know, doing this is not the smartest way to go about it. I have other steaming equipment, but if I'm doing something that I can, you know, with the board behind it, I'm giving, making it sturdy and I'm really careful. I can, you know, wearing gloves, of course, and barely touching it, being very careful not to drop it. You can get some steam on both sides. Boom, 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 boom. Move it on over. Be very careful. 
to steam on both sides, boom, 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 boom. Get it on your boards, put it under the press, steam, um, it's, it's steam, it's, it's moist, and you can now press it, and boom, it'll do wonders. You have to steam your comic books if you're gonna press them. It's a big mistake when you don't do it. Seldomly does it work out for you in your favor when you do not steam. All right, boom, moving on forward. Thank you so much. All right, worst collection that you've ever bought or seen. My first super chat is from Big Bob. All right, so I'm assuming when you say worst collection that I've bought, okay, so this is, there's two things here. Worst collection can mean like gross, okay? Dirty comics, comics that like I had to buy because there was like a handful of comic books that I just really needed. But there's also comic books that are like just a lot of crap that I just, I bought those, but I, you know, but I bought them for the big stuff and I got a lot of crap that I don't really want. Um, so worst collection that you've ever bought or seen. I bought a collection from someone who was, I mean, I live out in Washington. So like there's um, a lot of like recreational marijuana out here. It's all over the place. And it's definitely a very open community out here. So it's no thing. It's, it's probably unique to where you live if you don't live in a state where it's legal, but that's a thing out here. So there's a lot of pot growers. It's a very common um, profession out here to run into people that that's what they do for a living is, is grow marijuana. Um, so I found myself at this person's house who had changed his whole home into a growing facility, right? I went there because of a Craigslist ad because he had some silver rage on top of a bunch of modern comics that looked like to be near a garbage can or something. So I happened to go out there because I saw some books in the corner of my eye. I'm like, I live only an hour and a half away from him and I want to be in the area because of this other thing I'm doing. So I went out to this place and I go in there and like legit, it looks like these comic books were thrown into this box from across the corner of the room. And the only way that you can get those into the box is by hitting like a hundred plants on the way because this place was just, just plants everywhere. He's asking me to try out his creations and I'm like, dude, no, I'm really okay. Like I'm nothing against it, but I'm also not going to grow this random stuff that you have by your, uh, you know, your underwear drawer right there. Like that's not going to happen. But um, it was a unique experience because um, this box of comics was like, there's a lot of good comics in there. Like there was a lot, like I, there was like five copies of Booster Gold number one. And then there was a full run of Booster Gold number one. So I'm like, okay, he doesn't want very much for them. He's happy to get rid of them. Um, but this is like every other comic has like what it's like sap basically on the comic. So like a lot of them are never going to be able to be used. I'm going to have to get rid of them. Um, literally just packed with pot leaves. Dirt was in the box. But there was a bunch of stuff that was bagged and boarded that was saved. And anyways, yeah, that was probably one of the worst collections because they also had like, it was just gross. I was glad to get the comics out of there because it was just a lot of dirt and stuff that would harm otherwise really great books that were preserved for a long time that just were like in a storage unit that happened to get brought into this this garden, right? And yeah, the box was just, it was mangled. There was, it smelled really bad from like, it smelled like old, like, I don't know, it was in like moisture. So like a lot of mold was, I was in this box and I had to move everything out. It was super gross. I ended up scrapping probably 60% of that box, but there was a lot of good stuff in there and he was happy to move it. And that was probably one of the worst collections as far as like dirt and filth goes because they just weren't cared for and they didn't think that there was really anything in there. So they were just kind of like, yeah, check this out, throw it out there. You know, you know, some kid's going to want this. So anyways, that's probably the worst one that I've seen. Um, there may be more, but you know what? I'm going to think about that a little bit harder and maybe have some more collection find stories. Cause there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. shout out to the 130 plus people that have joined this feed. We do appreciate that. I'm going to be wrapping up here in about 10 minutes. Um, we do this live feed every Sunday. This is my opportunity to sit down with the community, with you guys, chat comic books, answer your questions. Um, if there's any questions that you want answered, please feel free to just join the chat. We got Fire Guy Ryan on here. Aaron Heron Heavens has also joined the feed. Uh, she, her name's Aaron, but she goes by Heron Heavens a lot. Um, and yeah, we got the team on here. I appreciate that, guys. Um, and yeah, a couple quick things. November mail call is filling up quick. If you haven't joined the mystery mail call yet, today is the 11th. Happy Veterans Day to all my, uh, to all the vets out there. We do appreciate your service and thank you so much for the, so for what you've done. 
um, to, to serve our country. Um, nothing but respect for you. Anyone willing to fight for us and to um, and to serve our country is a you know it means a lot to every member of the podcast. And shout out to all our vets on Sunday. If you have anyone in your family who's a a, a veteran, give them a call. My grandpa served. I'm going to give him a call as soon as this podcast is done. If you know anybody, just give him a call. This is like if there's one day to do it, do it today. Um, you should be calling for other reasons too. But um, I encourage everyone if you know someone. Make that one call today and, uh, you know, say thank you. It's important. We do have um, three more days for the mystery mail call to sign up. Um, the 15th is the last day of the month to reserve the box for that month. We have a She-Hulk print that's going out, um, which is from Ray Acevedo Art. It's a gorgeous print. If you haven't seen our artist pick video that we do every month, that video is out, came out this week. And we also have a bunch of content that's lined up for you guys this week as well. Some big stuff happening. Hopefully our live feed is going to be, you know, continually getting better. Um, today is probably not a good example of that because apparently it's super blurry. But you know what? We're going to be getting a new camera here soon. Um, we're going to figure, figure out this whole mic setup, make sure that this is working. Um, but we do have the mail call. Again, the 15th is the day to sign up or the last day to sign up. And yeah. Let's um, hit maybe the last bit of your questions. Questions, if you have any, if you have any to throw out there, um, I do appreciate everybody's time today. It's always good to see you guys on here. Where's the guru? I want his take on my romance books. Is Carlito Classica? That's a good question, man. Um, shoot him up. Hit him up on. Hit him up on. Hit him up on, uh, no, hit him up on Instagram. Elite Comic Source. Make sure to tag him. I'm sure if you tag him, he'll he'll talk your ear off about that. He knows all that kind of stuff. All right. Let's see here. Boom, moving on through. Okay, what book is your top pick for today off the top of your head right now? Go, Life is Strange, independent book. I do not know why I said that. You said off the top of my head, whenever there's a video game comic that hits a number one, like I think God of War number one comes out today as well, I just have a good feeling about them. There is a strong market for it and there's not a whole lot of like, spec books that are coming out today like i went through for my key collector picks if you don't have key collector i do um my weekly for like here's my cover pick of the week here's my um, independent pick of the week here's my key speculation book of the week that you can pick out wednesday um and uh, there's one more variant cover of the week i do those four picks for nick over at key collector and he puts me on this on the on the app um but I went through all of the lists watching comics with Bueller. Shout out, he's on the on the in the feed as well. He does his uh, weekly um, what's coming up. You can pick up on Wednesday video a sneak peek of the of the comics coming out, and he showcases like 150 books that you can look at. Um, I went through there like three times. I had to speed up the video because I was like, damn, I gotta watch it again. Shout out Bueller, thank you for what you do, man. Um, and I went through it. I couldn't find much. I'm like, ah, there's a lot of cool comics, but I'm not feeling anything. I'm not feeling anything I'm excited about. I think the God of War number one, as well as Life is Strange, those are both books that are like, something's bound to happen with one of those two. Because the, the following for those games are just so strong. There's not a whole lot of press about those books. Um, they're being made for the collector, for, the, for those who appreciate the game. And we've seen those type of books spike time and time again. Because for one, they're typically pretty damn good. And two... The collectors who are going to get them, they already ordered them. Like the God of War, I'm a fan of God of War, so it's going to be in my pull list. Like they were going to order them, but how many shops are going to get two, three, four, five, 10, 20 copies, especially if there are variants for these? So let's keep an eye out on those. Off the top of my head, I think it's worth at least taking a look. Um, we also had like a ton of Uncanny X Men books, as Bueller mentioned in the chat here. Yeah, they went all out on those variants this month, and I'm excited. There were some cool books there. Um, and yeah, pretty stoked about that. When will we get more comic pop and slob? Um, comic pop, not sure what that, oh, comic pop, my dad. When are we going to get more of my comic pop? Um, you know, soon. I am thinking very soon. He was actually supposed to be in that artist video. And for whatever reason, the audio file screwed up, you know, regardless of how much freaking effort we put into like this production, I swear there's always troubleshooting mistakes and things that just, just happen. We have to roll with the punches. So we had to refilm the video, which is kind of a bummer. But you know what? He's been talking about coming up on the podcast every week. We have some stuff lined up for, for with him 
this week. So expect something probably next week with my dad. And you know what? Slob is part of every video. You just don't see him on camera, but he edits a, a lot of these videos um, and he puts his creative spin on things. You know what? That's his form of communication is those really unique edits. That's Slav saying hi. So um, shout out to him, Giant from Earth over on Instagram. And if you want to motivate him to do a little bit more screen time, you just got to tag him and let him know. Because him seeing that, I'm sure it's going to motivate him to tell his story. Because, man, he's an interesting fellow. All right. We have, um, again, pushing over that 120, 130 mark. Thank you so much for everyone who's joined us live today. We have 82 likes. Can we get this to 100? I don't know. Let's see if we can. I'm going to ask one last time this video. Please hit that thumbs up. Let's see if, we get, if this gets to 100. Um, I'm thinking by the time we end this, more people will be able to see it on the playback. So I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you're subscribed. We pump out a lot of content for you. We do have a Venom Lethal Protector issue number six coverage coming out today. It's our last video on the Venom series. I'm excited to wrap this book up. We have a new video series that's coming out next Sunday. We're still in the you know, working it out mode, formatting. We want to make sure that we have a really good show lined up for you. It may not be a breakdown. I will let you know. Um, ooh, Bueller says I have another super chat that I didn't mention. So we're going to make sure that that one gets mentioned on here. I'm scrolling up. I hit Big Will. I'm going to keep scrolling. Bueller, do me a favor and let me know who it was. If Oh, boom. Carlos uh, Lete. What's the deal with airplane food? <laughs> I love it, Carlos. I love it. That's so funny. I'm, I'm hoping that's an office reference. What's the deal feel for airplane food? Do they make the food out of the airplane? <laughs> um, when getting things graded, is it better to send everything at once or send them one by one or small batches? It doesn't matter. To be honest, I think the best, my only feedback as far as grading goes is that I've seen a direct, like, and I can't even say this isn't even proof because this is just my small sample size. I feel like when you're getting comic books graded at shows, because the turnaround time's there. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're not giving as much of attention on it. Shout out to our conspiracy theory videos that we made months ago. But I feel like comic books at shows get graded higher. I don't know if that's true. I have no proof besides my own experience of getting a bunch of stuff graded and other collectors getting things graded. But you know what? That may be nonsense. I don't know. But no, send them all out. I mean, there's so many graders. You may have different people grade these books. They get When they get graded, it's not just one person who gets them all. They spread these out and they separate the names so that the graders don't know whose books they're grading. At least that's what they say they do. I, I tend to believe them because that's a very integral part of the grading process is to separate the grader from the consumer to make sure that there's no funny business happening. But truthfully, there's no real reason. I would say grade them together because you're going to save money on shipping because they, depending on the errors, I mean, if they're going to different places, you may have to ship them in different parts of the business. Additional, um, if there are, if you're doing them at a convention, you may be able to actually save your money on shipping there as well. So I'm going to say, save your money, ship them all at once. It's probably going to be fine. And yeah, best of luck with your grading. Let me know. And I do appreciate the super chat, my bro. Maybe I can get a new camera sooner than later so that this isn't as shaky and glitchy as you know as it's been because here it looks so good why can't you just look good we have a nice camera there oh well we're gonna keep it going all right we also have william s saying something cool here and i'm gonna why why not show this message i don't know why it's getting flagged william s says key collector is a great app and if you subscribe there are some great spec options for collecting that is very true shout out to nick over at key collector we're gonna be doing some more work together um, i don't plug his stuff enough i will be soon Nick, let's make some work happen. <laughs> All right. We are coming down to a close, the last minute. Quick little rundown. Look out for some new videos coming out today. We got Venom, Lethal Protector, issue number six, hitting the screen tonight. We'd love to have you guys join us. We're having fun with this series. It's a lot of good laughs, a lot of gags. It's going to be a good time. We also have a true first video coming out. Um, I believe that comes out tomorrow. We have our first Golden Age Guru show coming out this week. Super excited about that. It's going to be kind of an intro to what's to come. And if we are on track this week, we should be having our wizard, our first wizard show come out on Wednesday. What does that mean? We are, we've been, we hit up the community. We said, community, help us out. We want to make videos mm -hmm. on wizard. 
magazine. I don't know what we're going to do yet, but we need source material. Send us wizards. Send us your wizards. I went out and I purchased a wizard number one. I paid like $70 for it. I went out and purchased two, three, and four, which were all like $15. And I felt, I felt like I paid way too much for them. But we're sourcing content from wizards to put shows together so that we can all share it on the mic and try to digitalize what is Wizard Magazine in a purely entertaining way to bring some historical record to camera to you, as well as just some fun stuff that we find interesting. You know how we do. But anyways, look out for that coming out this week. I do appreciate your time. Um, make sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And as always, geek responsibly, comic fan. See you soon.